Well, I've told you that I was going to bring you up to speed about this project that I've got going on right here. Now, this is a little Harrishoff 14, and uh, these are very nice little boats. It's very much like a Harrishoff 12, but it is built a little bit differently. It's got a log-style keel in it instead of a bent keel, and it's two feet longer. I just think this boat's fantastic, so it hasn't had a lot of work done on it. I think this boat was built by Graves. I believe it was built by Graves. They built a couple of them. And uh, they just built the bare hull and then auctioned them off. So someone else finished the boat off, and I don't know the entire history, but uh, we've got it in the shop here, and it's suffering from something that many of these little 12s and bull's eyes and Harrishaw 14s suffer from, and that is it had damage right in this area in the forefoot, and that's from sitting on the trailer. The trailer damaged this boat. And uh, it uh, it's happens to a lot of them because the boats are real bow heavy. So uh, what happens is they start teetering on the, on the trailer up in here, and this trailer actually rusted out and put way too much pressure on a piece of metal that was right in here against the forefoot. It had already been repaired once, and uh, I'm just going to repair it again because we can't leave it the way it was. And it had a number of problems up in here. The garbage planks had really kind of sprung loose a little bit. And, uh, you know, people tried to refasten it, luckily enough, in the same holes, but they couldn't get them to go back in because inside the rabbit was all full of, like, dirt and different things. And uh, I think at one point somebody shimmed the rabbit, actually, because I peeled a shim out of the rabbit in order to get this plank to go up in there nice and tight. And uh, one of the shims between the frame and the floor timber had fallen out and went down between the rabbit. So there was no getting them back in. So what I did was I unfastened them all. I took all of these screws out. I used my little tool to cut brand new slots in all the screws so it wasn't really difficult to get the screws out at all. And they were number 10 screws. So what I did was I unfastened the plank all the way back to here on both sides of the garbage planks. And it's got kind of an odd garbage plank in it too because you'd think that this seam would just keep going like so but it doesn't it staggers around this first broad strike right here so we didn't want to take the garbage all the way out of it so i unfastened them back quite a way and i just pushed them out and i peeled all the cotton out and i cleaned all the rabbit out and everything else and then started trying to fit that plank back in there and finding out why it wouldn't fit and uh, it just had numbers of different things the back of the plank was rounded like this and yet all the surface that it wanted to mate up against was nice and straight, the floor timbers. So whenever I put it up in there and you'd fasten it here, it would rock the plank back and forth. It was just a mess. So what I did was I just sprung it out and I took a big slick like this while the plank was right in place. And I reached behind the plank and trimmed the back of the plank until it was flat and sanded it a little tiny bit. And then uh, I scraped at the rabbit a little bit and I got them to fit up in there nice and tight. A few other things I did was I took the bolts out of what you'd call the gripe up here, which would be the joint between the stem and the forefoot right here, and uh, the bolting was bad. Some of the bolting was all deteriorated and different things like that, so they had full threaded bolts that weren't side loading properly and all kinds of different problems. But I've extracted the bolts and I made a new stop water and refit this back up in here and bolted it back together. And now you can see that the garbage planks are fastened back up in place nice and tightly. And uh, I've whittled away at the forefoot down in here and fashioned a new piece and knocked the bolts out that went down through the floor timbers and different things that were in the way and uh, fit that piece on there and glued it up. And I don't expect there'll be any problems with that. I've done so many of these, it's unbelievable. And every boat you do is a little bit different because some of them are damaged up in here, some of them are here, some of them need a whole new stem. This boat was real lucky that it didn't need any more than this piece is kind of superficial. It is the piece that you caulk against when you're caulking this seam. You're pushing uh, cotton between the garbage plank and this piece right here. So this piece has to be bolted up solid and glued on nice and tight and uh, isn't going to be any problem at all. Some of the screws that came out of here, well, like I said, were number 10 by an inch and a quarter. And uh, 
I put number 12s back in exactly the same holes. We didn't drill any new holes or do anything like that. We extracted the screws, we put number 12s back in, they held perfectly tight, right in the same size plug hole. We re-plugged it in the same holes. It doesn't have one extra hole in it, and it's all buttoned right back up again and ready to go. So we only have a very few things to do, and that's caulk it with some cotton, and I'm gonna put some plugs in some of the holes, the bolt holes here, and that's pretty much it. Well, I've gotten out a pound of cotton or a ream of cotton here, and I'm just balling up some cotton so that I can, it's, it's easier for me to use it this way if it's balled up. I don't have to keep going back to the ream, ream and trying to figure out why it doesn't come out of there or anything. I always do it the same way. I take the ream, open it up, ball up the cotton, and then I just throw it into my little bucket there. And now it happens that I'm actually only going to use probably a half a strand because these seams are pretty tight right here and a whole strand would be a little bit tricky to caulk it with so I'm gonna rip off a piece right here and uh, I've got it, I'm gonna split it right down the middle. Now all that cotton is longitudinal in there so you could just go from one end of this thing all the way to the other and never come off the side. So what I'm gonna do is caulk it like that and then I'm gonna use this piece later. So I'm gonna start it off right here. This cotton's gonna overlap the other cotton that's in the seam behind it just by a little bit. And I'm using a little leather mallet here because I don't have space for my caulking mallet. And here we go. Now I'm just going to drive that in, pick up another little loop, drive that in. It's pretty simple stuff, really. The secret is getting the right amount in the right spot. One tap kind of gets it stuck, one tap sets it in, like so. Now I'm going to go back over this and set it so I can see if I've been stuffing the right amount in there or not. I'm going to start right here. Feels good to me. That's good, that's not going to leak there. Let's go on here. Now I'm going to have to work my way around the trailer here. A little bit difficult, but... So the first thing you want to think about when you're caulking a boat like this is to manage the amount of cotton that you're putting into the seam. Now, if you were to lap the loops of cotton over each other too far or too long, what would happen is that you would end up trying to pack too much cotton into the seam. That wouldn't be the way to go. It, 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 it's, it really requires that you get the feel of that seam. And, uh, you know, every seam is different because every plank is a different thickness. You know, the, the seams are a different width. They're not something that I fit together myself. You know, it's been together for many, many years here. It may change on you. You know, the seam could become a little bit wider in different places and a little bit tighter and the planking could be a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. So you really have to look at it. You have to look into that seam ahead of yourself and uh, determine how deep you think it is. And, uh, you know, it's not something that you need to write down or record, but it's something that you need to keep track of as you go along caulking because you can't pack too much caulking in that seam. Now I've repositioned my body here and uh, I'm on the other side of that piece of metal on the trailer. I'm still using this little mallet here because I'm in a confined area here and very difficult to use a caulking mallet in this situation right here. I'm going to switch over to it when I get a little bit more room. You see, I can't even get the caulking mallet in here. So what I'm going to do is just set that back down, like I said. Keep going with this mallet until I get the room to work and then I'm going to switch over to the other mallet and I'll tell you why as well.
and it's just getting into the very outboard edge of the seam, actually. That's the way you're able to get the right amount in there, is by just driving it part way in, and uh, then you're going to have to go over it again afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is pick up a mallet and go over this area, and I'm now I'm headed back down over that same seam, and I'm going to drive the cotton in all the way. Now, I go over it in reverse from the direction that I first set it. I set the cotton from left to right to get it into the seam. Then as I go over it, I'm going to set it from right to left. See if I can just get around this corner here. I'll have to come from this direction. Work my way up to the corner. Like that. Just gonna set this up. That's good. Now I'm putting on a headset because this beetle. This is what they call a beetle. It's a caulking mallet, but we call it a beetle because it chirps at you. And it's got a really terrible chirp as well. And some mallets are way worse than others. This one's not the worst one of them all, but it does hurt your ears if you're not careful with it. You don't want to be caulking any extended period of time with a mallet like this and a caulking iron like that because when you're done, you're not going to be able to hear anything. You know, so be careful when you're doing this right here. And like I say, I'm driving the cotton in in exactly the opposite direction that I first set it into the seam because I'm trying to get the cotton to, to seize against each other, each loop against the, each other and become tight against each other, never mind against the seam. So you can't just drive one loop all the way in and then another loop all the way in on top of it and just go along like that. That isn't going to work. What you have to do is set it part way into the seam and then go over it again with your caulking iron and your mallet. I'm going to pull it. It's just too tight in one spot and not tight enough in another. So what I've had to do is stop right there and pick up a reefing hook and pull that cotton right back out. Now, I'm not beyond embarrassment, but, uh, you know, then again, I'm not that embarrassed about it because the fact is, is that it has to be done properly. Part of the issue there is, is that it's got the gripe right there. Now, the gripe is a spot in the boat where the forefoot and the stem come together. Right? And uh, there's a, a, an odd piece of wood in there that I would call a stopwater. Now, you can see it right there as I cork up to it. It's basically what it is is a hole that's drilled in the seam, right through the seam, because you're trying to interrupt that seam. Now, I can't interrupt that seam in between the two pieces, between the stem and the forefoot with cotton. What I want to do is interrupt that with a piece of wood. So what you do is you drill, say, a three-eighths of an inch hole through a piece of oak and then taper it, and then you take an octagonal piece, possibly a little bit bigger than that, that hole is, and you drive it down through that hole in that piece of oak and out the other side. And what it does is it squashes that piece of wood down to three-eighths of an inch in diameter. You know, it, it wouldn't do you any good to, to turn it three-eighths of an inch in diameter and then put it in the seam because it wouldn't swell up enough and become tight enough to interrupt that seam perfectly well. So what you do is, like I say, you drive it through a hole in a piece of wood and out the other side, and when it comes out the other side, it's three-eighths of an inch in diameter. So you can see it as I caulk along, as I caulk past that stop water. You know, the stop water is exposed. And uh, you can see the very outside of that stopwater, the very forward side of the stopwater, the side that the caulking is, is being pushed up against. So what happens there is the cotton interrupts the seam and the stopwater interrupts the uh, seam between the stem and the forefoot. So that's the way it's done right there.
Now, you can see that I'm using a particular technique as I do this. I'm rocking the uh, iron back and forth as I go along. As I rock it, I'm able to slide it along a little bit and have it be in a different position and then drive it again and then rock it again and drive it again. And, uh, you know, if you're lucky, what happens is you get into a really good rhythm of doing this and you're able to go along quite rapidly as you go along these seams and uh, drive the cotton into place. So we're just finishing up here now. We've got one more long seam all the way up to the bow, and uh, as I go along caulking this, you know, you, you, you really, as you caulk it, it has to be pleasing to you. I think the pleasingness of it is what allows you to develop the rhythm that is necessary in order to get the job done properly. You know, it's funny that you, as you caulk along, you just seem to start smiling right away, and uh, it's pleasing, like I said. It, it, it just, it's a satisfaction that you get out of it that allows you to be able to feel good about continuing going along the same way. Everything about it has to be right. You know, I have to feel good about it. I have to, it has to sound right to me. The rhythm has to be there. So that's pretty much it on the starboard side. Now we're going to shift over to the port side and caulk that with cotton. And then the only thing we have left to do is cover it with seam compound. Well, now I'm up inside this little Harrishaw 14 here, and I'm going to show you a few other things. It's got a few problems, nothing too, too serious, but uh, this boat's got a lot of life left in it, but it still has to be taken care of, and it needs a few alterations. Like I said, uh, the problem up here is, is that the frames were put in this boat with the annual rings across the frame and the medullary rays in this direction of thwart ships, and I swear up and down that's not the way to do it. But uh, I guess each to their own. I want to show you right here what the problem with it is. Like I said, with the medullary rays going athwart ships, what happens is when you drive screws in the framing to hold the planking on, or for any other reason, whether it's to hold any of the ceiling down inside or otherwise, they're going to line up with those medullary rays. And what it does is it pries the frames open on the medullary rays. Now you can see these frames are all checked right in here. The wood is actually still pretty good, but you can open these checks up with just very little pressure like that. Now many of them are exactly the same way. The next one's the same way. And there's quite a few of them exactly the same way. So they've been abused quite a bit as well by fastening the sole barrels along the side of them. And uh, they've been screwed on and taken off and screwed on a number of times. And the frames are starting to get peppered to death with holes here. And we've just got to do something about it. Now, I can't reframe the boat. It's not time to do that. I really don't want to assist to frame it and put frames alongside these frames and drill a whole bunch more holes through the plank and everything else. What I'm going to do is something that I hadn't really done before. And it's taken a little bit of a decision to come up with this. But... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap another piece of wood around the outside of this. I'm going to clean these all up, get down to some really nice solid wood. There's really nothing wrong with the wood itself, like I said, but it has a little bit of alkaline damage on the surface. And we're just going to scrape and plane that off until they come up to be nice clean wood. And then we're going to take a 5 16 inch piece of uh, white oak and bend it around the frame. Now I've got one right here and I've kind of clamped it to the floor timber up against that frame at the bottom here and uh, I've had to remove the seats because the seats would just be in my way terribly. If I tried to put one of these on from the top down, it'd be kind of a struggle bending it around and getting it fastened off at the bottom here because uh, you can't disturb the glue over and over and over again. Once you spread that glue in there, you want to lay this down one time and tack it down one time and be done with it so that you still remain having glue in between there. So it's kind of a bit of a process and uh, 
The other problems with this boat were that uh, the sole bar is fastened to the framing right here. They've been fastened on quite a number of times and taken off for numbers of reasons and uh, it's just made a mess of the frames in that respect as well. So this will strengthen the frames up without sister framing and I think it's a great thing to do to it. The owner and I got together on it and decided that this was probably the best thing to do so this is what we're doing. And uh, the other thing I can tell you is I'm going to replace all the sole barrows because they've just been deteriorated quite a bit and all beat up. And then I'm going to put them back in the same spots that they were in, but I'm not going to fasten them off to the frames. They're just going to be kind of like a modular sort of a floorboard system. I'm going to use the same floorboards. I'm going to replace the sole barrows, but then I'm going to put some deeper sole barrows that go alongside the frames that will fasten to the side of the frames, but the bearing will be on the top because I'm going to cut like a rabbit out of it so that the floor timber will sit on top of the frame and yet be fastened alongside. So I think I'll, that'll cure that problem. And it's only had a sole bearer on every other frame. So, I mean, I can decide to put them on the frames that didn't have sole barrels on them or anything, but we're still kind of designing that system and uh, it's going to cure the problem. The other problem with it was, was the sheet lines went down to the floorboards in this boat, right in this area right here, the main sheet. So whenever you tended the main sheet, you were pulling up on the floorboards. So it's yanked the floorboards out and it keeps wiggling them around and everything and abusing it. The other problems is these boats don't have enough seat support. The whole seat support for four people would be basically on one frame. That's not very good. I've got to do something about that. I've got to put like a little, um, like a seat riser or something in here you might call it, or a brace across the frames and then run the barrows down on top of that. So there's a few things to do in here. It's got a couple of frames that have started breaking where it comes around the footer curve and we're going to take care of that. And like I said, just by adding this piece on the top and it's just going to be tacked down, I'm not going to uh, disturb any of the fastenings or anything like that. We're going to glue up these checks and hypodermic needle some glue down in the screw holes here and just take care of all these little bits and pieces. So that's a little bit about this job right here. But there's two big announcements that I'd like to make. Our next series will start August the 25th and that's going to be on the building of the Total Boat Sport Dory, a 14 foot dory that I designed myself. I'm real excited about building it. I'm excited about showing it to you guys. I'm excited about using the boat because this is a boat that I designed to be used by myself. This is a boat that I want actually. So pretty excited about that. And the other thing I'd like to say to you is we have Tips from a Shipwright t-shirt finally available. Uh, you can get in touch with us through our website or just shoot us an email and we can send them right out to you. I don't think there's anything I'd like better than to sell one of these t-shirts to every one of our subscribers. That would really set us up really nicely. Uh, it's support for us so that we can continue making these videos and continue satisfying our audience. So, uh, you know, look forward to that. Get in touch with us about that and uh, we can't wait to see you wearing them.